still. What's up YouTube? Today it is Wednesday. I have no idea what date it is. I'm here at the service center shooting a 3900 mile Audi R8. Okay, 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 okay. Super clean car, black on black with the new, I guess like styling, it has like the new reshaped mirrors. Uh, the headlights are a little bit different, they're not as new as the newest body style, but it has like the new updated LED strip and it feels really nice. It's, um, I have no idea what year it is or any specs on it, I just got here and I, I saw it and realized that I had to shoot it. So we'll start the vlog off with the photo shoot right away first thing in the morning. It's a pretty dope R8, it has all black interior with the stitching throughout, it's pretty sick. It has like a heavy metallic paint too. Automatic gearbox which is eh, it's still fast but fun. One of the weird things I noticed too is that, I don't want to slam my freaking foot in the door, but these mirrors are shaped really differently compared to like a standard R8, usually the ones are, the ones from the ones are, are more, usually the ones from the previous model are more bubbly, this one is a little bit more square. This car has like 1300, no it's... 3,900 miles on it. Carbon fiber interior options. Has a new like style, not newest style, but somewhat new headlight style, I guess. Looks pretty good. Uh, all right, let's shoot this thing. I can't find my tripod, my bendy tripod thing. And I swear I left it in my car somewhere. It's not gonna fit under there, so I don't know. There's all my camera stuff here. Oh, I found it! First try, well, second, actually. I'm here really early, it's like 11, 20 in the morning. I usually shoot cars at like 12 or one in the afternoon. And it's weird because the way I position the interior of the car is usually the car will be facing this way and I'm facing this way because the sun is directly behind me. That way you can see here all the shadows are pretty much, they're casting into the interior because you can see if I turn any more to the right, all those, all that light's gonna come in here and make the interior look like it's blown out. So what I try to do is I always have to, I always try to make sure that the, that the sun is to my back or towards the back of the car. That way the shadows get casted over the interior and you're not dealing with too many shadows because I don't have any overhangs to shoot at so there's no shadows at all, or no blowouts, I guess, like uh, overexposed areas. So I have to do what I can and make the best with what I do have. I just finished shooting this R8, so we're all good to go. Um, I'm gonna park this thing back where it was, and then 
there's two or three other cars that I do have to shoot. Um, there is a very special car here that I want to go see, but I have a lot of work to do. So I'm going to give you guys a quick sneak peek of the cars I'm shooting the next two or three days. Um, I haven't really said much about them because I just found out today. So, well, I found out yesterday, but let me, um, I'm going to park this thing and I'll show you guys the other two cars that I have to shoot. And one just went missing. Where did that car go? Oh, it's a Bugatti. Damn. It's probably super windy, but this is the car I have to shoot too. Black 458 coupe with brown interior. We just got it. So, I'm gonna shoot this tomorrow once this gets all cleaned up. Once it gets all cleaned up. I'm happy to see my tax dollars are going to good use. They redid all the roads, all the way down Torrey Pines. Finally, it feels so much better, not gonna lie. So I know a lot of people are asking for some kind of like tutorial video on basically how to edit pictures and how to edit your photos, um, like the final process of it. So I figured today I'd make a quick video on that. I've just had such a high demand from people saying do tutorials, do tutorials. Well, today will be that day for basic inventory photos of how I edit and sharpen up these photos I do for the website. To give you guys a quick rundown of what these photos are for, if you go to ogaracoachlahoya.com, you will actually see all the photos that I take myself of just inventory shots of basically like you saw where I was doing the time lapse around the car, the interior, the exterior, whatever it was. All those photos will go onto the website so people can see them. Oh, shit. What vlog did I need those for? Whoops. I'm always finding unused footage. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually importing everything through iPhoto. Now a lot of people say, oh, don't use iPhoto, use Lightroom, blah, blah, blah. Eh, this works for me. This will be your guys' view for the next few minutes. I'll try to make this as efficient as I can. And hopefully this gives you guys some good direction. Let me turn my fan off so it's not making too much noise. So what we're going to do from here, basically we will go ahead and export a bunch of these photos. What I usually do is I'll make a folder on my desktop, we'll title this one R8. Now I go through and I kind of see which ones look the best, some are overexposed, some are underexposed, uh, it just depends, didn't mean to do that. What I do is I try to get the best shots of all the angles. Now if you guys can hold tight just for two seconds, I'm going to import these into Lightroom. So now we're gonna open up Lightroom and I'm gonna go ahead and import about 18 photos that I took of this R8 that you guys just saw in the last few clips. Go ahead and import these. Now the first thing off the bat that people are gonna say is, why do you shoot in JPEG? Well, there's a few different reasons for that. The first reason is this computer that I'm using for work doesn't have a lot of space on it. It has roughly, I'm gonna guess probably 50,000 photos. 22,000. Yeah, 22,000 photos on it right now. I just cleaned it off. I had 60,000, so I clean off every once in a while, but basically I just, I didn't have enough room on here and I didn't want to get an external hard drive. Most of these photos go into Dropbox, so we have them forever. The other reason too for JPEG is the fact that it's a smaller file size and it's just easier to edit. I don't need raw photos for this kind of stuff. It's literally just in front of a building, so I, I don't need to touch it up like crazy. So what I'll do here is you can see how the shot is, act I'll zoom out a little. You can see how this shot here is very wide and I really want people to focus more on just the car itself. <clears throat> so what I'll do is I'll, I'll press control A and basically crop the whole entire picture into a different, different like a uh, ratio or more, just a different size in general to kind of tighten it up. So when you go to the website, you just see this, you don't see like a more of the wall. You're actually gonna see more of the car itself, which is the most important thing. Now that I have this photo here, everything looks pretty level. Everything looks pretty solid. What I'll do is um, I'll go over here and I'll do clarity. I'll turn clarity up to about 20 or so, maybe a little bit more. And that's gonna just sharpen everything up. I'll go through the shadows and what I'll do is I'll crank it all the way up and I'll crank it all the way down. And I'll find the difference of you know where I need to be as far as my shadows. Now for this, 
this. I could definitely go in here and like clean up a bunch of those shadows. I could go through here and clean up some of the stuff on this reflection here. You know, I could darken this, I get rid of these spots. This stuff doesn't really matter when you're doing inventory photos. You just want something very simple to look at and easy. It's easy on the eye. One of the things that I will do is I'll go through and what I'll do is I'll press, uh, basically what I'll do is I'll, I'll go through a certain segment of the car or a certain section and I'll find where it's very overexposed or has too much of a reflection on it. This passenger door has way too much going on. So what I'll do is, um, if you click here, show selected mask overlay, it's gonna pick out all the area that you select in a paintbrush that you choose. And now once you select that area, it's gonna basically give you full control of that selected area. And you can literally turn the contrast up and down in just that area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the exposure down just a bit, and I'll probably turn down some of the shadows just because I don't actually know, I'll go to highlights turn the highlights just a little bit further down, exposure just a further, little bit further down, and there you have it. It'll kind of clean up that door a little bit, and what you can do is you can go back into your history and you can see the difference between where it was and where it is now. So you can see it's just little things like that that help. I'll go through, I'll add a little bit of warmth to it just because the picture's kind of too cool for me. <laughs> it like as in temperature wise, it's a little bit too blue, so I'll probably go plus three, and then the last thing I'll do, honestly, for this is probably turn up the exposure in general just a tad. Eh, no, probably not. We'll go through with a gradient, and this wall is a little bit too bright, so I'll just pull that down. I'll turn the exposure down just a tad. And there you have it. So now, that's going to be your final photo as your front main picture for the website for the car itself. And we'll go ahead and I'll X out of this and show you guys a difference. Show a little before and after. So this is how the picture started out. And then that's how it's going to look in the final process. Just sharper, a little bit more um, contrast, just, just sharper in general. It's nothing major. Um, I would love to do a photo shoot in the future or an editing <laughs> session that shows you guys like the full process of it. Uh, doing like a real big photo shoot for like commercial stuff that just gives you an idea of what that could look like now We'll go ahead and press uh, Shift command C and that's going to give you an option to pretty much copy every single thing that you just did of this photo And you can apply it to any other picture you want So we'll go ahead and press copy go over here press control V same thing, and that's just gonna copy exactly what you did to the last photo without the reflection. So now I'll go ahead and do a quick time lapse of me finishing up this whole set, and then I'll catch up with you guys in just a minute. So now we have moved on to the interior shots, which are a little bit more tricky. As you guys heard me talking about, some of the areas that I run into problems is when you park the car in certain sunlight areas where you get shadows that are casted or unwanted overexposed spots. You can see at this top right part of the screen, it's just way overblown. This bottom left is a little bit too bright. So what you can do is you can come through here with a gradient or you can use your brush and you can darken it down just a little bit just so it's not so aggressive. And also with that bottom left corner too, it's a little bit too bright. Um, so we'll turn that down as well, and that just gives it a much better look, much cleaner, and we'll straighten out, straight out the horizon. Uh, add a little bit of warmth to it, a little bit more clarity, and then you're good for that interior shot. This kind of stuff too, a little bit overblown, just turn down the exposure, straighten out the horizon a little bit more so it's more pleasing on the eye. That too, more warmth, exposure down. Uh, we don't need that shot because I shot two of those. This was the secondary shot I wanted to use. It shows all the carbon fiber. One of the main things you want to focus on too is that when you're shooting these cars is that you're really paying attention to a lot of details. So you can see here, like for this kind of photo, I wanted to highlight the depth of the steering wheel so you can see the, see the paddle shifters, also the perforated right there where you put your thumb. Um, also like the cool stitching here, the shifter, basically highlighting the things that the car has to offer. Once again, this car, this picture has a little bit too much of an overexposed top or overexposed area. Um, and like I said, this stuff is nothing major. I know there's different ways that you guys may do it or different ways that you recommend doing it, but this is the way that I prefer to do it. It's just easier for me, it's more efficient. No, oh, great. Yo. You all right? Yeah, what's going on? You just been quiet lately. Oh, I've just been working like crazy. What is it? All this stuff. Oh, I don't know. Did it showed up in my office one day? It was in the closet. Is there even anything in here? Yeah, it's like oh, guard of stuff.
give me because he's the he's the one that drove it back. What is that? Slice of pizza, one. <laughs> the it's pizza? Good. No, yeah. it's all right. You already you already finished yeah, it? Yeah. Oh no, it's all right, dude. You can give it to YouTube. Okay, here you. <laughs> <laughs>